Welcome to Season 5 of the Get Out of Teaching podcast presented by Larksong Enterprises. This podcast is for teachers who are considering leaving education but feel like they have no options. I'm your host, Elizabeth Diakos. I'm a career transition coach who guides overwhelmed teachers through a five-step process out of education and into a life they love. I'd like to see a world where the work of teachers is valued and respected and that teachers have a career pathway that enables them to continue to offer value to society beyond their work in the classroom. So in this season, we'll be speaking with wellbeing experts who can help you to stay well as you plan your exit. If you're almost ready to leave and you need to redo your resume, Check out my Resume Revamp digital download. It's a comprehensive guide to making your resume show off your assets. For $49.95 Australian dollars, you'll get pre-filled eye-pleasing resume and cover letter templates in both US letter and A4 size, a lexicon of teacher terminology with a translation to corporate speak, and a bonus PDF on getting past applicant tracking software. Check out the resume revamp package on the product page of larksong.com.au and come along for the ride as we get out of teaching. Episode two. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. Um, I'm really excited about this season of the podcast because I'm talking to experts in the health and wellness space uh, because a lot of teachers are really struggling as they leave education and they need to stay well enough to be able to do their job and plan their exit strategy. So I'm really pleased to be speaking today with Philippa Bullett, who is the co-founder of the award-winning health practice, Chris and Philly Functional Medicine. Philly, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Elizabeth. Super excited. We've been trying to tee this up for a long time, so I'm excited to finally talk to you. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. Okay, so tell us a bit more about what you do and how you help people. Yes, so I'm an accredited clinical nutritionist, um, also a functional medicine practitioner. Not many people really know what that is, but it's a specialization in the natural therapies where I combine scientific lab testing with um, and then healing people's bodies with natural therapies. Um, I'm also a PhD scholar and very passionate about helping Uh, high achieving parents end their body burnout for good, especially those people who are struggling with energy, mood and gut issues. So just repeat that last part, who are struggling with what? Um, Energy, mood and gut issues. So they're kind of the three three big symptoms that we see in our clients that we're really good at solving. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So are you saying that there's something else you can do apart from having a a chocolate frog at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. More to yes. it than that. <laughs> yes. Or coffee or energy drinks. Yes. We can give you good energy without needing those stimulants. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. So far away. What have you got for us today? Awesome. So I wanted to talk about dopamine. Um, are you happy for me to screen share now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So for so for the listeners, Phil is gonna screen share. And this will be viewable on on the YouTube channel, the Get Out of Teaching YouTube channel. Yeah. And if you're watching audio, you don't need to be looking at these slides, but it's cool if you're on YouTube and you can have a little look. Um, So, Elizabeth, so your season's all about staying well while getting out of teaching, yeah? Absolutely. And so I'm guessing you're talking to a lot of your interviewees about managing stress. That's right. Yep. Stress, anxiety, um, and all the facets of wellness, you know, like from where you live to what you eat to what you breathe, all of it. Yeah. Awesome. So I wanted to, when I was thinking about, oh, what can I kind of like focus on in within that scope, uh, I wanted to talk about dopamine which is an amazing brain chemical which gets burnt out under stress and so it's something that we see commonly in um, clients especially those who have been in quite high stress spaces um, which I'm guessing teaching is a bit like that which is why people want to get out of it is that right? (laughs) Yeah absolutely and especially I think with the pandemic where there's been this expectation that in some cases, the teacher will teach in person and onto the screen at the same time um, and manage the classroom, the virtual classroom and the in-person classroom. 
Uh, a lot of teachers are under an incredible amount of pressure um, and, and that's just really building on the pressures that already existed before the pandemic. So the expectations about data gathering and needing to, you know, manage bigger and bigger class sizes, which is what they're talking about again now, is to yeah. increase support but also increase class sizes, which yeah. means more marking, more differentiation in the classroom for their students. And so it becomes a really stressful job. And then you're on for like six hours straight. You know, you're like a performer on the stage. You've got to be chirpy and happy and, you know, kind and all those things. And it takes its toll. Yeah. And I, I mean, 2022 is probably going to be quite different too. I have two kids in primary school, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the quarantines and the isolations, you know, even if you have a little cough. Like some teachers might end up teaching two groups of um, classes, who knows, and masks and mandates. Um, I know actually we uh, work with quite a few teachers who are just super stressed out about a lot of things. Yeah. So, well, we, Philly, just um, for the listeners, you're in Tasmania. So you've been, uh, you missed out on a lot of that because you were isolated being on an island. It made it a bit easier to um, avoid some of those uh, restraints or constraints on on you know civil liberties um, but let me tell you the rest of the world knows exactly what you're talking about now yeah yeah for sure so um so when it comes to dopamine I'll, I might just backtrack a little bit and talk a little bit more about functional medicine and how it relates to looking at your brain and dopamine levels so when someone comes to us and they're experiencing stress-related symptoms, and you nailed it before, like anxiety, fatigue, um, headaches, brain fog, they're really common things for people to be experiencing. But then also other inflammatory um, symptoms start popping up, like gut issues, bloating, heartburn, constipation, PMS, skin issues. And so uh, so in functional medicine, we do lab testing. So we want to, we're not just trying to treat symptoms or even diseases. We want to figure out what's going on inside the body that may be or is or are causing the symptoms that someone is experiencing. And then from there, once we discover those imbalances, then we treat the root causes because you can find an imbalance in the body, but often those imbalances happen due to something else that's, you know, happening in someone's life, whether it's the way that they're thinking, behaving, eating, the environment, all that sort of stuff. So the three main body systems um, that I test for are the neuroendocrine system, the GI system, and the detox system. Um, and part of the neuroendocrine system is is all about testing the brain, which is really cool. So we use testing that's different to GP testing. Uh, so GPs or medical specialists are looking for diseases um, and then they miss a lot of these functional imbalances. So uh, looking into the neurotransmitters. So if you went to a doctor, for example, um, and you explain you're experiencing depression or anxiety, they often don't do a lot of testing they'll usually just prescribe antidepressants which is going to change the brain chemicals um, but it doesn't necessarily heal um, the brain chemicals if they're really depleted so that's what how functional medicine is a bit different when it comes to the brain we actually want to discover what neurotransmitters are depleted and let's restore those neurotransmitters rather than synthetically kind of just manipulating the way that your brain functions um, so dopamine is an amazing brain chemical that is so good for so many things, really important for having good energy. So you might have heard some people um, say, uh, like, I get my dopamine boost or I'm going to the gym to get my dopamine boost or I'm living on dopamine. And usually those people are explaining the phenomenon of having like more energy, more excitement, more, even more joy and happiness. So dopamine is your energy neurotransmitter, really important for mental clarity, productivity, which is what you need as a teacher or even as a business owner if you're transitioning from teaching into owning your own business. And creativity, dopamine is so important for having creativity and I would definitely say joy as well, so having joy in your life. Um, 
So some things or some symptoms, common symptoms that I see occur if someone has a dopamine deficiency. So usually like if I'm working with a client, I'll spend 90 minutes, sometimes two hours with someone really understanding the symptoms they're experiencing and why this might be occurring. Like I don't just chuck lab tests at you. I kind of want to figure out, is this going to make sense to test your brain? What's going on here? So some of the common uh, symptoms that I see with dopamine deficiency are anxiety, depression, fatigue, brain fog, memory issues things that i mentioned earlier some other really key ones as well though are addictions so dopamine um again like going back to oh, i need my dopamine hit i need to go to the gym to get my dopamine hit so like exercise is healthy of course but it can become unhealthy because a lot of people can get quite addicted to exercise or dopamine producing activities so that could even be netflix or more like intense movies or xbox or wine or cigarettes or like alcohol is a big one and so although like initially if your dopamine levels are starting to deplete you go towards those activities or those things to help get a dopamine boost but over time if you're continually doing those addictive things then dopamine levels can deplete even further and it just becomes this vicious cycle you need it but then it depletes it even more <laughs> right so so basically what you're saying is there's this kind of uh like you're uh, i mean I, I know i remember i studied psych back in the dark ages um you know before i had kids and uh the the subject that the the lecturer taught was called addictions and attraction so it was also like being in love is another another way to get that fix you know where you you see the beloved one and you get that little boost and you know you yeah. feel excited uh, so yeah. he was talking about that as well so it's anything that really brings you either joy or maybe like a release from the thing that's stressing you is that fair enough to say Yep. Yep. Um, other thing, yeah. Or even like getting a gratification. So oh, I actually saw a post on Facebook, I was on Facebook, um, about TikTok and, uh, you know, the author Daniel Priestley was writing about TikTok and how poisonous and detrimental it is, especially to children and teenagers. And it is because it becomes so addictive because people get this dopamine hit. They're like, oh, how many likes have I got? How many comments? And then notifications keep popping up on the phone. And so that's like another way that an addiction can show up, but you can also deplete your dopamine. Um, also, I would say almost every kind of high performance business owner that we have worked with, where we have tested their brain chemicals, dopamine is depleted. So also working and overworking and, you know, addictive doing um, is what I call it which is great, like, or not great. I mean, it's great to achieve and want to achieve, but there needs to be that balance. And sometimes you overstep the boundaries of overworking and then that's what can do, um, deplete dopamine as well. Right, okay. And I noticed on your list, you've also got restless legs and tremors. So is yep. that like sort of Parkinson's disease type symptoms? Yeah, so Parkinson's disease is literally your dopamine levels drop and so I mean that's not the only reason why someone gets Parkinson's disease but that's a common um uh, makeup of someone with Parkinson's disease and the medication that people go on Parkinson's or for Parkinson's does have a dopamine um uh, aspect to it Right. From a functional perspective, it might be like if sometimes I'm like, oh, just show me your hands. And if someone, you know, hands are slightly tremoring, I'm like, does that happen often? They're like, yeah, it does. It's been happening for the last three months. I'm like, okay, let's think about dopamine here and restless legs. So that's when you're trying to go to sleep and your legs are kind of just twitching at night. Um, that can be another sign of dopamine deficiency. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That then you've got to a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people talk about that, that symptom. Yes. Yes, very common. Sometimes it can also be magnesium deficiency too, which is why I love testing rather than like, oh, you have dopamine deficiency. Let's give you this. That's right. sort of like, well, I feel like this, like a strong signs that that's an issue. Let's test for that. Okay. Um, and then, as I said before, like lack of joy, lack of self-confidence, lack of self-worth can show up as a dopamine deficiency, especially if that hasn't always been the case. So for me, um, I, after I did my PhD, actually, I got my PhD report back to say I'd passed um, on the day I gave birth to my daughter. 
And I remember that, and I had a lot of kind of like health issues after having children, um, but dopamine, like this lack of joy, I mean, I, sh- I usually would have been like, yay, I passed PhD, Woo, that took like five years, it was the hardest five years of my life, well, let's go party, let's go to Bali, um, but I had nothing, like it was kind of like, oh yeah, that's nice what am I going to, what, what's next? What am I going to do next? So that's how like lack of joy can, it doesn't necessarily mean you're like completely depressed. It's just that it's just like, you don't get excited about life like you used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a little warning signal that I'm and like. I, and I guess like I, I've experienced that, that sort of, uh, sort of flatness and, and, and just put it down to, oh, this must be what it's like to get older. Like you, you just don't have that same joie de vivre that you had when you were younger, but you're telling yeah. me it could be something else. Absolutely. Um, actually, I had a lady uh, um, come to me with different types of issues, or though dopamine issues are probably coming into it too. But her doctor said, "Oh, you've just got DOB." I'm like, "What's DOB?" Oh, the date of birth syndrome. I'm like, "What? You can't tell someone that it's just because you're getting older that you're feeling like this now. It's not good enough." Yeah, that's a bit rude, isn't it? <laughs> Like, whoa. <laughs> okay. All right. So how do we fix this? How do we, how do we've talked about um, the things that can deplete it, like just being exhausted is one thing. It, what else? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll, so I, I want to go over five main things to help support dopamine levels. Before I do that, I guess like a little segue is like, what are some specific things that can deplete dopamine? So I mentioned before prolonged stress, addictive behavior that then drags it down even further as you're trying to boost it up. Um, But things like poor diet and digestive issues is a thing. And I'll go into that a bit more soon. Drug depletion as well. So if you've been given prescribed a, like an SSRI, for example, so that's a serotonin kind of like antidepressant. If you have an underlying dopamine deficiency, that SSRI can actually drag your dopamine levels down even further. And I mean, sometimes, um, again, this is kind of like me just guessing, but some people go on an antidepressant or an SSRI and feel much worse. And so that's where it's like, hmm, probably isn't anything to do with your serotonin levels. It might be some other brain chemical that's just getting like, kind of like dragged down because of that drug. Right. Um, supplements as well. So there's certain supplements. Again, if people are just self-prescribing based on Dr. Google, you might actually be making a dopamine issue worse. Um, neurotoxic exposure. I want to talk a bit about that in a second, but that's more about environmental toxins. Um, head trauma can be another one. So if you've played, I don't know, a horse rider or you've been playing football or netball or basketball, you're constantly getting hit on the head. Those um, knocks to the head and anything that involves concussion, car crashes, whatever, can literally damage your brain chemicals. Um, Genetics, sometimes you're just born with issues where you're not um, metabolizing or processing nutrients in the body to convert into dopamine or different uh, neurotransmitters. So they're some of the the underlying reasons why there may be a dopamine uh, deficiency in the first place. Um, so I want to talk about five, if we have time, (laughs) five things uh, that you can do to restore dopamine. So I have mentioned before test, test don't guess is like my big motto. Um, again, like if you're listening and you're like, Oh, I have all those symptoms and all some of those things relate to me in terms of why they might be depleted. Sometimes your issues might not be due to, say, a dopamine deficiency. They might be because of adrenal fatigue or pathogens in the gut. And so in order to get on top of your unique health issues, it's best to actually identify what body systems have burnt out so that we can or you can treat them accordingly. Um, And, yeah, I mean, whether you work with someone like me or uh, someone else, um, it does involve doing like pee testing, wee testing, spit testing, poo testing to try and identify what body systems are out of balance. Okay, so just um, before you go on, yeah, you're in Tasmania and I'm in Melbourne. If I wanted to work with you, what does that actually look like in practice? 
Yeah, so we, I mean, we do meet with people in person in my cute little clinic here, um, but most of our clients are actually virtual. So we work with people Australia wide. Um, so doing consults through Zoom, just as we are doing our podcast here, but the testing is, I so people don't actually poo in my clinic. <laughs> I'll, I'll give them or I will post them the test kits and then you complete those samples at home and then those test kits are sent back to lab companies either in Victoria or New South Wales um, and then I receive the results. So I don't actually, I would love to do this, but I don't actually analyse the poo. Like I think that that would be so cool to be in the labs. Maybe that would be my like second job 10 yeah. years down the track. <laughs> So, yeah, so, so this is like the uh, the similar to the poo test kit when you when you turn fifty. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's as simple as that. I mean, the wee test that I use that looks at the brain chemicals and a few other things um, uh, is just like doing weeing in a little cup and sticking it in some syringes and popping it in the freezer for a couple of hours. Just as long as your kids don't think it's an icy pole, then like you're all good and you can post it off. Oh, I see. <laughs> Got it. Yep. Yep. Um, um, okay. So that's test. Don't guess. Um, second one is your stress bucket. So no, so understanding, and this is like something, and I know that, you know, there will be listeners too, who are like, Oh, the test, uh, like I'd love to do testing, but I'm just not ready for that yet at the moment, but what can I do now? So these, these things I want to talk about are some things that you can like practical tips that you can do now. Um, so understanding your stress bucket. So stress is a major cause of dopamine deficiency um, or burnout. And so knowing, so what we usually do with clients is like, okay, let's look at all your stresses. And most people will think about emotional stresses or like life stresses, like, you know, work or relationship stresses, but stress comes in so many forms. And I liken it to like, you know, you have your bucket. And when your bucket gets too full of stresses, that's where the symptoms start popping up or that's where the body systems start burning down. So some other stresses. So one, looking at your emotional stresses, busyness stresses, like what are some things that you can control, like understanding what you can control and what you can't control and then addressing the things that you can control to reduce stress right. um but stress comes in many forms so it literally could be temperature um actually before we started this podcast you mentioned elizabeth that like oh the heat you're feeling like very sapped by the heat mm. um so being too hot or too cold is a stressor that can fill up your bucket so can you control that well maybe you can get a fan or an air conditioner or if you're too cold get proper heating in your house like that's literally something that will stress your body and your body doesn't recognize emotional stress to temperature stress like all of the different stresses still cause the same burnout so if you're feeling a bit like oh, I'm stuck in this job of teaching, I can't get out of it yet, or maybe you've transitioned, you're in a startup and like, oh, crikey, starting your own business is kind of stressful too. It's like, well, you know, if you feel like you can't control that aspect of your life at the moment, what other stresses can you control? Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, at the start of the year here in Australia, you come back from the summer, I guess it's the same everywhere, you come back from the summer and the weather's just so unbearably hot. Um, the first six weeks of school are just exhausting because the kids are all tired and grumpy. The sun sets really late, so so yeah. everyone's gone to bed too late, so they're all a bit tired. And then it's super hot, and they come in from lunchtime, and they're like their hair's stuck to their foreheads with sweat, <laughs> and it's just oh man, I'm so glad I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, so everyone has to move to Tassie because we don't get heat that hot except right, for maybe okay. like two days of summer. It's like, whoa, this is so hot. It's just like what, nice it's like 28 hot. degrees or something. Oh, yeah, that's like that's like hot. That's yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I, I don't know what time the sun sets in Melbourne where you are, but it's like 10 o'clock and my kids are still like wired and can't get to sleep because the sun's still like coming through their curtains. That is, that's hard. Yeah. Um, okay, so just some other stresses too, and I'll talk a bit more about these ones that are like environmental toxins, so petrol fumes, cleaning products, um, a diet, so whether that's uh, processed inflammatory foods, maybe you're actually eating a healthy food that your body just doesn't like that's causing bloating issues. So, you know, that could be something like rice or 
onions um, or apples, um, anything that's causing you distress is going to be stressing out your body and can literally like deplete say something like dopamine or brain chemicals um what are some other things exercise so either not enough exercise is stressful but at the same time doing too much exercise is very stressful for your system so it's looking at all the different stresses and what are some things that you can control right now would be kind of like tip number two okay awesome all right so um so for instance let's go with exercise yeah. Um, I, I, nearly everyone I talk to, like all of my teach, teaching clients, uh, have neglected that. Um, and so they're, you know, they, they, they're getting up in the morning, they're going to work, they're coming home, they're exhausted, they've still got to get dinner ready or, you know, organise their own family. Uh, and then they fall in a heap on the couch at 9 o'clock at night and, you know, fall asleep on the couch or, you know, drag themselves off to bed to do it all again the next day and exercise is not factored in. So how do you, yeah. how do you manage that when you're in that, that kind of environment? Yeah. So, um, we, so my husband, Chris, who is my business owner, um, his previous life. So he's a life coach, mindset coach now, but he used to be a personal trainer. Um, and so for super busy people, although he had clients coming to the gym, but, the biggest thing that would make it that would help people who are coming from a complete sedentary kind of lifestyle is try and get three walks, three 10 minute walks a day. Like if you think about it, that's just kind of like a walk around the block or it's a, do you have 10 minutes at lunchtime where you can pick up your food and walk around the playground or right. if someone's listening and they're not actually in that teaching um, department, but you know, maybe you have a different job or you're, you have your own business, can you do a phone call and walk for 10 minutes? You know, it's kind of like thinking about if you've got a super busy lifestyle, exercise isn't a priority for you at the moment. Mm. How can you fit it in by doing it at the same time as doing something that you're already doing, whether that's eating your lunch phone call um yeah so I'd say like just start yeah. small yeah well I often ring my mum while I'm out walking because that's yeah um, kill yeah, two birds with one stone and yeah if, you know we have a long conversation it's fine I just get extra steps so you know it works well but yeah I get you or and actually another little thing I used to do was just like park across the road from the school rather than in the the school car park and that yeah. way I'd have like you know an extra 40 or 50 steps to get into work yeah, yeah. And I would say too, um, again, like if you're someone who, if I'm talking to someone where they're like addictively exercising, it's a completely different conversation. But someone who is just struggling to even get movement into their life, just do something that you find enjoyable, like play. So this past year, my big thing around exercise, I've always been a very structured exercise person, strength training aerobic exercise but this past year has been completely different for me for certain reasons but um it's pretty much just like playful movement so like walking my dog around you know we have a beautiful um walk near our house or going for a swim with the kids and grabbing the boogie board you know it's not stuff that would people would necessarily think oh but because a lot of people connect exercise too with weight loss and it's like oh well you know if I just go for a swim with my kids at the beach, I'm not going to lose weight, but it's like, it's not when we're talking about reducing your stress bucket, it's not necessarily like you shouldn't be thinking about exercise in relation to weight loss. Right. Okay. Um, so I guess that probably actually comes into the second one, rest and recovery. So dopamine again, is that very like, go, 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 stimulant, stimulant, work, 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 fun, fun, fun. And if you're not getting that rest and recovery and downtime, that's where dopamine levels can continue to deplete. And so rest and recovery is so important. Let's talk about like workers too, addicted workers, where you're overworking. Um, if you're not having that rest and recovery, your body is constantly in that, it's constantly in a stress state. And even when you try and go to sleep at night, or even if you do sleep, your body doesn't get a deep restorative sleep. And so with rest and recovery, like wellness tips, it's 
it, it's very many. It's sort of like whatever works for you. So I'm, some people love meditation, whether you download like a meditation app or you join a group and you do guided meditation for half an hour. That doesn't really work for me. I don't love that. My mind is kind of like chitter chatters, but I can easily go outside in my yard and lie down on the grass and just lie in the sun for 15 minutes and just be there. And so like for me, that works for rest and recovery. So it's finding something like a technique that works for you, but trying to do something with, that you can do daily. Nice. Okay. So, um, so th- these are just practices that you're incorporating into your daily life. Yeah. Yeah. Another big one would be sleep. So our body, um, so between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., our body physically repairs. And between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., our body mentally, psychologically repairs. And so getting to bed on time, I know that this this is all stuff that people know that people don't do. But getting to bed on time. So if you're going to bed, if you're going to bed at like 11 or 12 p.m., you're missing two hours of physical repair to your body. And so that's where your neurotransmitters and your dopamine and your brain chemicals and your gut and your liver and your adrenals all repair from doing, doing, doing all day. And so if you're kind of like going to bed too late because you're trying to, whether it's like staying up watching Netflix trying to escape from your crazy busy life or you're staying on the computer trying to meet deadlines, then that's going to be detrimental to your body. So prioritizing like going to bed on time. Um, And then for people who are struggling to sleep during the night, so I know a lot of people will wake up between the 2 and 4 a.m. mark. And, you know, if you're constantly waking up at night time and not being able to fall asleep, then no wonder you're feeling anxious and stressed and overwhelmed because you're not getting that restorative sleep in the psychological repair phase of the night. Um, So is that like REM sleep you're talking about, like dreaming? Yeah, 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 yeah. So getting the, yeah, there's like three, is it three or five stages of sleep? Um, All of them are, are important, but yeah, getting that deep sleep. And for some people, they don't get much of that at all just because their body is in such a state of stress that they can't get into that deep sleep. Um. So like some little tips too with sleeping and to improve that would be turning screens off two hours before bed because the bright lights on a screen um, increases cortisol, which is your stress hormone, and it depletes melatonin, which is your sleepy hormone, which is why some people struggle to fall asleep after being on screens or might be waking up during the night. Um, stimulants, <laughs> talking about wine before, um, is going to affect blood sugar levels throughout the night, uh, having a sugary dessert uh, after dinner too. So all of these things can definitely affect the quality of the sleep. So that's super important. Okay, so if you have like ice cream after dinner, then at some point, later your sugar levels are going to peak and that might wake you up is that what you're saying yes yes correct yeah huh. yeah and also to, oh and also to going back to the the alcohol um like if you're having a red wine at night or something um the liver works its hardest at around 2 4 a.m and so the liver is trying to metabolize get rid of alcohol so that can disrupt that whole system or it puts stress on the liver which then can cause people to wake up and not getting and not get a deep sleep right okay um so the other one is reduced toxic load and i popped this one in because it's super important when it relates when we're talking about dopamine and brain chemicals so a big reason why your brain chemicals deplete or become damaged is because of toxins. And we live in a world that is so toxic. It's probably the most toxic it's ever been. Um, And a lot of people get really overwhelmed with that. They're like, well, what can I do? You know, the moment I step outside, um, especially if you're living in a city where there's petrol fumes and all sorts of stuff, factories, there's just so many toxic chemicals. And so again, it's like, well, what can you control? You know, there might be things that you can't control in your immediate future. Certainly like being 
purchasing environmentally friendly stuff and living sustainably is going to help in the long term. But there are some things you can do right now. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't know what your if your listeners uh, you know, may be doing this already, but it's kind of like I always get people just to start within their home. Like, what are you breathing into your system, and what are you putting on your skin? So, like, what type of cleaning products are you using in your home? What type of skincare? What deodorant? What makeup? What hair care? Um, have a look at the ingredients list on those products. If you can't understand a word that you're reading, they're probably toxic. <laughs> um, so, so those things can definitely cause issues. And I, this is probably, uh, I've my journey into health and coming into functional medicine has been a process. But earlier on, again, like I got quite sick after I had my children, um, lots of issues, energy issues, really bad anxiety. I called myself dragon mom, um, low immunity. I was catching colds and flus and infections every two to four weeks. I had a lot of things going on, chronic pain. Um, and I became really sensitive to chemicals. So I had my second baby and she was three months, I think, or two months. And I started getting morning sickness. And I'm like, holy crap, I can't be pregnant again. These children have already caused so much pain and anguish to my body is like my mindset back then. Um, and I worked out and I had bought not to bag out a product, but Scentsy. Scentsy candles are kind of like the uh, the fake kind of like burning candles. You don't actually light them, but you just plug them into the wall and they emit toxic chemicals basically in your home. So I purchased like a bunch of these as a party planner um, and I was starting to get morning sickness, headaches and just feeling really yucky. And I thought I was pregnant. I kept doing all these pregnancy tests. And then I went away to Sydney for a couple of weeks and all of those symptoms disappeared. When I came home, put the Scentsy candles back on, I started getting all the symptoms again. And that was a big light bulb moment to me that it was like, holy crap, all these toxins in my home are literally causing some of my symptoms very directly. What else are they doing that I'm not aware of, like to my body? And are they contributing to how I was feeling? So I went on a massive like clean out of my house, chucked out all my chemicals, learned how to make everything myself. You can probably see it the back there. I've got like my own happy biome, natural cleaning skincare range now because I was just super like, holy crap, this is making me feel so toxic. Mm. Um, so, so that's something like really practical that you can do if you feel really overwhelmed and you're like, how do I even know if they're good or they're bad? Um, a website that I love to use is www.ewg.org. Um, you can actually enter some products into the website and it will tell you if it's safe or not. Um, or you can search out individual ingredients and it will tell you if something is toxic or safe and then you can make better informed decisions when you purchase your next product. Right. So www.ewg, is that correct? Yep, .org. 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 Okay. And what does that stand for? Do you know? Oh, that is a really good question. Environmental, uh, not sure, off the top of my head. Environmental wellness group. Let's call it that. I don't know. It's great. It's got heaps of research articles connected to ingredients and stuff as well. Like it's not just some random person's blog who's like, this isn't very good for you. Um, there's a few other resources too. The Chemical Maze is an amazing book and you can download the app. They're Australian. Um, and also Think Dirty app is a great app just make sure you add app to think dirty otherwise you might come up with some other random okay. website got it got it <laughs> actually um you just made me think the other day we we got a a new slow cooker and it had that you know teflon coating on it and yeah. uh, my husband turned it on and he was he was gonna he likes to make the dog um like home cooked food Oh. Um, and the dog, yeah, thinks he's a human. So he, you know, is quite happy to have something that basically is what we would eat ourselves, only it's for him. Um, and he gets the same dinner every night. <laughs> we, we have more variety. Um, but but so he turned it on and it was brand new. And the, the smell of the whatever that coating is, oh, it was just like overwhelming, yeah. disgusting. And he yeah. was about to, he would put the oil in already, the olive oil, and he was about to put the the chicken. The dog got chicken this week, oh. and I, and I said, "You can't give him that. It's going to taint the food. This yeah. the 
whatever's coming off it. So then, you know, we had a silent argument with our eyes <laughs> and I um, tipped out the oil, washed the thing, turn it back on again and let it and it was a lot better the second like it sort of had already released whatever gross chemicals into the atmosphere so it yep. was gonna ruin the food as well but but yeah i'm like oh we just breathed or whatever that was in yeah yeah and that's the thing when you buy clothes furniture paint your walls like all of that stuff adds up um and then that's why people start feeling overwhelmed they're like well what can I buy like or do I have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to buy like cotton organic sheets for my bed it's like well I mean like if you can that's great but you know budget might come into it but it's then it's sort of like well what what's achievable to replace with natural sources and just do one thing at a time as well like maybe don't be like me it's just like just chuck everything away and get all new stuff (laughs) Um, oh, the other thing with toxins too is just, so sometimes people then say to me, but I'm already living toxin free. Like I'm already eating organic and everything like all my skincare is good. And then that's where, you know, we can then do, or I often do testing on detox pathways. And for some people it's genetic as well. You're just born with some genetic issues where you can't detoxify very effectively. And so, you know, yes, it's important to live as toxic free as possible, but also sometimes those detox pathways need therapeutic support as well so that you can actually clear toxins from the body effectively. Right. Okay. Um, and the last, last thing, um, little tip would be is support your gut. So that relates to dopamine in a couple of ways. So one, your dopamine, uh, so your brain chemistry that we've been talking about, um, Uh, that's supported by the amino acid tyrosine. So tyrosine comes from protein foods. Um, It's a protein. And so one, like just thinking about diet, are you eating enough protein sources? Um, Maybe you just need to increase the amount of protein that you are eating. But often it comes back to your guts, just not breaking down protein very effectively. And so especially meat or animal products are really hard to break down. For some people too, plant products are as well, like legumes. Um, And protein often gets broken down the most in the stomach. So a lot of people have stomach acid that is too low rather than too high. And when your stomach acid is too low, your stomach just struggles to break down protein, which means you might be eating like bucket loads of meat, but are you actually absorbing tyrosine and the other amino acids that you need? Um, So again, like I do lots of testing on the gut and, you know, therapeutic treatment, but some things that you can start right now would be to chew super slowly (laughs) because a lot of people, and I know like teachers and busy people and entrepreneurs are like hopping down food because they need to get to their next thing on their to-do list. And so if you're not chewing properly, then by the time the food hits your stomach, it's like it has to work so much harder to try and break down this food that should be broken down before it even reaches there. And this is really hard. Like you can try and do it today, but um, try and chew 20 times before you swallow. That is like the ideal pace for eating and not many people do that. Um, some other little home remedies that too. Must help with weight loss too, surely, Philly. If you're taking that long to eat, your brain's going to get the message that you've had food. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. It's like, oh yeah, actually, I am full now, and you're only like halfway through your dinner or whatever. Yeah. Um, some little home remedies too. Well, actually, I get people to. This is just an at-home free test, but you can actually um, mix bicarb soda with water and drink it. And if you burp straight away, I know it's really gross. If you burp straight away, then your stomach acid is pretty good. But if it takes like three or four minutes before you start burping up bicarb soda, that's a sign that your stomach acid is too low. And so that's not good. So you can um, help support that by one, eating slowly, also just breathing. So before I eat, like I do actually say grace on my food and, you know, we stop and we slow down and, you know, give gratitude for the food that we're eating. And, you know, that allows me to take some deep breaths as well, which just helps you to helps your body to go into that uh, parasympathetic rest state where your body can actually digest food better. Um, 
Also apple cider vinegar, so the one with the fermented mother in it, is quite good to drink like 10 meals in water before you eat your meals. That can also help stimulate stomach acid. Most people have that lying in their cupboard. So that's something that you can do quite easily just to help your stomach acid or your stomach to produce the acid it needs to break down protein so that your brain can get the tyrosine that it needs. So so vinegar is an acid. Yes. And it's helping that so it produce more acid. Is that what you're saying? It's, yeah, it's the vinegar. It's also um, apple does the same thing. So apple pectin, um, there's this, uh, it's a pretty intense liver. I won't talk about it here, but you can drink lots and lots of even apple juice, apple cider, apple cider vinegar does the same thing. It stimulates digestive juices in your GI tract. So not just stomach acid, but it can also support or stimulate your gallbladder to produce and squirt out bile into the small intestine. It can also support production of digestive enzymes as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's one thing. Other things, and again, this probably requires more sort of like the functional lab testing, but identifying if you have nasty pathogens in your gut, whether it's candida, fungal overgrowth, parasites, bacterial overgrowth, all of these things can um can cause you to have inflammation in the gut, stress your system out, but also it can prevent you from actually absorbing food into your system properly so that your brain and other body systems get what they need. Um, looking at the gut lining as well. So leaky gut can be a big issue uh, when it comes to gut function. And so that's where your gut lining basically separates and food particles, toxins, pathogens can enter the bloodstream and cause an inflammatory response. So, they're the sort of things um, that I would be looking at in terms of gut function, especially in relation to causing brain issues and stress-related symptoms. And then, of course, food. Like food is medicine. So at the very least, just eat real whole foods is usually where we start with people. It's like, okay, let's reduce the processed foods that you're having, the sugar, the, the breads, the pastries, Um and start eating real foods. And it doesn't mean like, cause I know a lot of people are very busy and time poor. It doesn't mean you have to make everything from scratch. Like there's things you can purchase from the supermarket that's already packaged. So it's not necessarily that you have to stop eating packaged foods. It's just looking again at ingredients and choosing better quality foods that are going to support the good bugs in your gut and your gut lining. Yeah. My favorite solution to the summer salad is, um, there's, you can get a bag of like the leafy mix. It's got a bit of grated carrot and beetroot in it as well. And yep. then they've got, there's a kale slaw salad, which is basically just already pre-chopped. And so like two big handfuls of the leafy thing and a handful of the kale slaw. And it's like, this is delicious. And some, all it's all fresh, but it's just been pre like packaged, like chopped up for me. Um, I love that. It's been a yeah. game, game changer in terms of what to have for lunch. Over yeah. Summer. There's actually another um, John West, John West tuna. Mm -hmm. uh, I have these in my cupboard. So usually lunch is leftovers, but sometimes there's no leftovers or my husband gets to it before I do. And I'm like, oh, great. I have like 30 minutes before my next consult and I don't have time to cook anything. So um, John West tuna also do. It's just like tuna, legumes, like chickpeas, chili, and I usually do half of one of those little package, like they're just packaged up. You don't even have to put them in the fridge and I'll add it with some baby spinach. You know, like it doesn't have to be, right. it doesn't have to take a long time to make. It's mm -hmm. just finding ways that you can incorporate healthy eating into your busy lifestyle. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Um yeah, so are we are we there? Like, what I else think do we, we need are. To think about? Yeah. Do you, um. So I just like if anyone wants to learn a little bit more about um the stress and burnout and hormones and gut and brain, all the things that we spoke about today. Um, I have a couple of resources. So they're both free, but we have created a ten part mini course on hormonal and gut burnout. I believe that link will be in the show notes 
for people who aren't visually looking at this. Yeah. Um, and also we have a scorecard. So we it's called the Ending Body Burnout Assessment. This is a great little scorecard that looks at your symptoms. So it rates your symptoms in terms of, uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem, or actually you're doing pretty good. Um, and then it looks at the three main contributors that cause uh, your body to break down. So it's looking at your behaviours that support body function it's looking at your mind and also your environment and so it gives you a score at the end and for each category um so it can give you some good insights in terms of like what are the weak points in your life or in your body and what are also the strengths awesome okay so that's uh if if you went to chris and philly dot fm you'll find all of that stuff yep yep awesome thank you Okay, no, so please. before we wrap this up, what what's your like number one tip for the stressed, overwhelmed teacher who wants to get out of teaching, but they're juggling their workload and their family and they're also trying to plan their exit because everyone I talk to says, well, I'd love to do, you know, start my own business or apply for 20 jobs a week or whatever, but I'm, I'm, I can't do it. I'm burnt out, I'm exhausted and I just don't have time. What would you say to that? Oh, so many things uh look I just think I think sleep is so important and I know that and I know that because and I know that because personally I didn't sleep Mm -hmm. and it I feel like that was like the number one cause of why I started getting issues in the first place and from a mindset point of view it's like yeah but I'm already struggling with time and trying to do all the million things that I want to do how can I sleep more when I by sleeping more, I'm going to have less time. And in fact, I would say it's the opposite. I'd say if you can get a good seven to nine hours, it's different for each person of restorative sleep and really prioritize sleep hygiene, getting to sleep. If you can't actually fall asleep or stay asleep, then you need therapeutic support. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you can sleep, you're going to have more energy. You're going to have more mental clarity. You'll be more productive. So you can actually fit in the stuff that's important for you and also uh, this is probably like second would be like well what's what's most important to you like looking at your what you highly value and prioritizing that around your value system Mm -hmm. and if getting out of teaching is like super important to you this is probably like outside of my scope but I just say like just make the leap I mean what's the worst that's going to happen Really, like I've made from a business point of view, my husband and I have made some pretty scary decisions. And like I've always been the person who's like kind of like the financially like, oh, but what if this happens and this happens? Whereas my husband, Chris, has always been like, you, it, it'll be okay. Like we'll, we'll make it work out. And so just so rather than getting stressed out about your decisions that you make, even if it feels like a scary one, like face that with confidence and joy and like play rather than because the more that you get stressed out about these things the more it's going to like burn out your body systems in the first place (laughs) yeah yeah. got it all right well look philippa thank you so much for coming on the get out of teaching podcast i love the insights you've shared today and um i'm excited to think that it doesn't take that much to i'm just thinking about the chewing thing i think for me that's probably going to be the the my big takeaway is just slowing down being grateful and being more mindful and that that's going to have all these benefits about making absorption better and getting more benefit from the food but also giving a chance for that signal to get to the brain to stop eating and that might solve a whole heap of other problems for a lot of people yeah yeah and then the slowing down as well like that one thing can solve so many issues and you can do that like that you know i had been talking about quite a few different techniques as well and it's like you can do three or four techniques in the one go mm. if that makes sense like slowing yeah. down chewing better digestion weight loss <laughs> love, it. love your work awesome <laughs> right, well, thank you so much for coming on the get out of teaching podcast today i i didn't give you a heads up about this question but i'm just going to ask you one further question what's your favorite song oh my favorite song the first one that popped into my head just because yeah. my girls have been singing it. This is not a favourite. Oh. Tell us the first one. Oh, that okay. one was, um, what is it, Raw, Katy Perry? Oh, You're yeah. You're going to hear me raw. Oh, oh, oh. 
Love it. Okay. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but maybe it's like a high energy song that I'm like, just want to dance to. And like thinking about playful movement to me, dancing is movement. Like do it for five minutes. There you go. You've done your movement for the day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. We're done. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you. You've been listening to the Get Out of Teaching podcast presented by Larksong Enterprises with your host, Elizabeth Diakos. Thanks for listening. If you need more support in your journey out of education, check out larksong.com.au, book a triage call and take the Get Out of Teaching readiness scorecard. I've been where you are now and you don't need to do this alone.